uh, I will now introduce our speaker for today. She has a bachelor's in high school education and a master's in international studies and a second uh, and a uh, postgraduate program evaluation. She is a uh, uh, counselor, education counselor at Cégep de Lévy, pedagogical counselor. Before getting into the world of college education, she worked for five years at Université Laval for a project uh, to uh, work on agricultural training in Mali to develop processes and tools for evaluation and actualization of programs, as well as evaluating pedagogical uh, and teaching uh, for uh, the students. Uh, a wonderful webinar, great webinar, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. So I am in full screen mode. Uh, perfect, okay, thank you. So Power BI, uh, Breathing life into data for better uh, pedagogical decisions. Uh, just uh, a short uh, intro to start. It's not uh, a hands-on. It's not a publicity. I'm not going to show all the functionalities of Power BI. But in all humility, I'm coming here to share best practices. Why did we choose Power BI? How did this transition happen for us? and some examples of implementation and how we use it to uh, uh, process data and a bit of a retrospection uh, and uh, a, a prospective look at uh, what uh, we gained from Power BI and uh, what's coming in the future. As Nicole said uh, for my presentation, I'm not a person who's really about numbers. I'm really all about data, so qualitative uh, Data. I'm not a numbers-oriented person, but I work with our analyst, Francois. So uh, it's just a bit of a caveat uh, to uh, gauge expectations. So uh, I'm not here to say that Power BI is a magic bullet that will solve all the program, all the problems for students and programming, but it will help us to analyze the data and can help us to analyze uh, data to feed into our thinking process and support our decision making and contribute to reinforce the quality of educational programs and the success of the students. So a bit of a history and context, uh, Cégep de Lévis, it was in 2016 that our first dashboards uh, gave uh, 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 were given life in 30 pages and presented uh, some tables, graphics with ventilation of uh, data in different ways. Uh, and uh, a few years later, there was the adoption of our institutional policy for uh, program management, institutional management of programs, so the, a continuous evaluation of educational programs. A few years later, we worked, Francois and I, to redo the uh, dashboards with Catherine Paquet Guavin, who was there and helped us. Catherine helped us a lot with her experience at Collège Marie Victorin and to uh, have dashboards that were more effective, more um, effective visually, uh, more efficacious. So also to work on uh, development of data collection tools with a committee that was uh, struck, a validation committee, to develop these data collection tools with uh, the teaching body, uh, with the students, employers, teachers, everybody. And these uh, tools were uh, included in uh, the PGGP uh, continuous evaluation of programs and were uh, adopted in the winter of 2022, which means that only at the fall of 2022, we were uh, ready to uh, start uh, evaluating uh, programs of study. And we had uh, uh, plan to process a lot of data without a, a historical amount of data. And that's when I arrived in this role. And there was a specific mandate to contribute to, to the deployment of uh, uh, continuous evaluation of uh, uh, programs of study. There was also a, a group from Eredstat who uh, uh, was uh, put together when I arrived. It was a, a, a conjunction of circumstances that brought me to be interested in Power BI and um, the um, interest uh, be facilitated by the fact that there was a community I belonged to that uh, was looking at it. So uh, why uh, did we uh, 
choose uh, Power BI. Uh, we had uh, some up-to-date uh, dashboards that were much uh, uh, more uh, user-friendly and effective. And the, there was an aggregation of uh, uh, data. We don't always want to do that to that point, but population A, population B, certain different issues, but uh, we don't want to aggregate the data necessarily. But uh, uh, for those who are uh, not from the college of pop uh, world, population A is people who have, are from uh, high school, and population B is people who are already uh, in the college world. So we are also to uh, watch for confidentiality and not be able to uh, uh, trace the data uh, to the people who are answering and providing the data. And um, also, uh, to we wanted to really process many sources of data uh, from the fact that we were collecting perceptual data from the employers, from the students, uh, the teachers. So what was interesting with Power BI is the interactivity uh, allowed by the platform. So the possibility to uh, build uh, populations A and B but also to uh, separate them by sex, because sometimes in certain programs, uh, we observe uh, certain certain hypotheses that are emitted so we can explore those hypotheses. And so also allows to have access to aggregated data. Uh, so in hiding the data sets, so in making sure that uh, the users had access to the data and could process different hypotheses and look at different hypotheses uh, without necessarily looking at uh, what each of the respondents uh, had uh, answered so that we can uh, protect uh, the privacy of the people uh, providing the answers. Uh, so uh, once we've uh, developed uh, the structure of our report and Power BI, we can change the source easily. So that accelerates and facilitates the work uh, uh, for evaluating programs. We collect data every year. And so we uh, can easily uh, change uh, the source of the data and uh, uh, update uh, uh, the dashboard. So this transition towards Power BI, um, it started in October. 2022 with uh, the Repstat uh, uh, group, uh, some modules on Microsoft Learn that were identified and uh, uh, chosen. And we had some uh, meetings uh, pretty regularly to uh, do this. We had some time blocked out in our schedule as a community, but uh, each uh, one of us to be able to progress and exchange ideas, discuss, ask questions, uh, uh, in December, January 2023, my colleague Francois, our analyst, uh, also uh, got into Power BI and he created uh, our institutional dashboards because Francois is responsible for producing the annual dashboards. So, so he also uh, jumped on the bandwagon. So in February 2023, we were launching our uh, dashboards in Power BI. And also we, uh, uh, on my end, for... Uh, the results of the uh, continuous evaluation of uh, educational programs. I uh, came in to create uh, our visual aids summaries that can be used by guidance counselors and the program teams. So in spring 2023, there was already uh, some work done by the team, the CP team with the program teams to be able to use uh, the new dashboards, but also the uh, data coming from uh, evaluation of programs. So why am I showing you this? There's some key elements here uh, to take away from this. So the possibility to be self-taught. So when you're interested in Power BI, uh, two heads are worth better than one. So it's unbelievable the number of times where I ask questions to Francois and uh, we were wondering how we could do certain things and vice versa. And uh, uh, also with the Epstad colleagues, a deployment is possible in a few months. If you want to do that, I will present the winning conditions later on so that you can accomplish that goal. And uh, the added value of the utility of Power BI is the analysis that will be done and the animation, the usage uh, uh, of uh, uh, the tools and functionality. So the uh, most relevant uh, the most relevant uh, uh, dashboards won't be useful if there's not rigorous analysis and uh, uh, discussions and uh, workshops done around them. So I'm presenting all this. It looks great. There's 
some uh, caveats, however, there can be some issues with licensing uh, for CEGEPs that uh, had the Microsoft Education license, the Power BI license is included, but it wasn't always the case. So on our end, we had to do a bit of gymnastics during the first year of deployment to be able to uh, see who would buy, who we would buy licenses for, how we would use them, and how we can make sure the program teams have access to different data, et cetera. So there was this aspect that we had to consider before uh, jumping into things. And the expertise in Power BI is uh, not as uh, uh, widespread as Excel. So of course, if we want to put this forward, we have to make sure we have a lot of people that are capable of sharing knowledge and teaching others as needed. And uh, on my end, I imagine that people who work a lot in Excel uh, 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 have experience with this, but in Power BI, sometimes uh, one little detail changes everything. You haven't changed the name of a session, for example, that you uh, had in your report. So if when you import the new source, there's one little detail to change and everything doesn't work. So you have to be able to troubleshoot. So, Nicole, maybe we can take a little minute if there are any questions. So far, there are no questions, but we can take 30 seconds to see if there are people who want to ask questions in the question and answer tab, and then we can continue our presentation. For now, I don't see any questions. Yes, I'm... Um, going a bit fast. I'm a bit stressed, uh, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I would have enough time to answer some questions. So let's uh, continue. All is well. Thank you. So a little bit of a look on our internal processes. We have two services uh, that uh, use Power BI. So the service for pro uh, for development of uh, pedagogical programs, the SPDP, which is the uh, guidance counselors who uh, belong to this group, and the SCOS, which is the group uh, for uh, pedagogical orientation for educational guidance. So uh, it helps uh, the students uh, guide uh, their career, if you will, their path. So we deploy these uh, tools for continuous evaluation of educational programs, collecting uh, data from the different stakeholders, uh, students, uh, graduates, uh, teachers, et cetera. And after collecting this data, uh, uh, which is uh, done in the fall every year, which is done with a pre-set uh, uh, calendar, a cycle of six years. We produce uh, visual uh, summaries of the uh, uh, evaluation of the programs. Is ESCOS, who will be ba who will base themselves in data in Clara and PSEP to produce the institutional dashboards. So all these tools are then analyzed uh, in a preliminary way by a guidance counselor that will then give context to the analysis with the uh, program API, the coordination of the uh, program committee, because the idea is to cross reference the different evaluations to have a full portrait, the most complete portrait possible, and to be able to emit different hypotheses uh, related to uh, the findings uh, from the data. So then there's uh, a workshop with the program committee, with the SAP and uh, with the uh, Comité de Program. Uh, uh, so to uh, uh, to be able to uh, uh, emit hypotheses for these uh, different findings and as needed when uh, these are situations we want to improve certain things to find some actions, some solutions that we can implement. So then the idea is to really come and target priority actions to uh, be able to uh, uh, give life to that in the uh, working uh, plan and the uh, working group will be able to, uh, the committee will be able to do the follow-up. So I am now presenting an example of the, the, uh, the uh, boards developed by Francois. So the dashboards, usually these are lists with all these programs. Um, sorry. And so as you can see here the uh, on the dashboard, we have uh, the different indicators, the key indicators that we uh, chose. So the first two histograms here will compare the uh, 
number of registrations in the CEGEP and in the uh, college network, population A, population B, population A uh, is from high school and population B is with what uh, they uh, passed in college. So to, to be able to compare uh, the different sets of data, it would be uh, ridiculous to put them in the same table. So to put them side by side, uh, really to be able to look at the trends and see if there are similar, if there's a drop, is it the same thing uh, for one stage up versus uh, the average? And if there's an increase or some stability, the idea is to be able to check, to have some reference uh, uh, data. So if we can uh, refer uh, 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 and uh, compare our stage up to the uh, 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 average, the mean. So the, uh, the, Averages and the average uh, of the uh, scores of the students and the 70 percent uh, uh, and above or 70 percent and below as a high school average. So uh, uh, with Catherine's inspiration, when we did some thinking about that, really based ourselves on the literature to say what uh, data would be interesting to cross reference to come and explain certain phenomena. Uh, so we know that. Uh, the average uh, uh, score of uh, high school, the general average in high school is a good uh, uh, gauge of success. And so we know that our students that are the most vulnerable are the ones that have an average in high school uh, over under 70%. Uh, so um, the idea is to have a table here that contains all this uh, information, this graph here. Uh, so that when we observe that when there's a uh, higher success rate is it uh, then uh, and the average do we have students that are strong do we have a success level that is higher in the CEGEP uh, network when we because of students that are considered weaker or we have a bit more uh, students that are vulnerable it could be interesting to uh, cross-reference all this data and to observe them uh, uh, in the same conditions to be able to uh, emit hypotheses so the same thing with the success rate, 100% first semester, that's the proportion of students that will succeed 100% of their classes during their first semester. And uh, the literature says that the success rate 100% will uh, push down the uh, general average as a predictor for from high school so in terms of uh, uh high school uh, in terms of perseverance so it's a two uh, pieces of data that are interesting to cross reference because well our students when we have a higher proportion of students that uh, succeed 100 percent of their classes the first semester can we really observe uh, a uh, success in the third semester if it's not the case what would be the hypotheses that would allow us to explain that uh it, things change, things are different than what the literature would uh, uh, bring us to expect. And so there's a table here on the uh, rate of uh, diploma uh, completion. We have uh, the uh, length of the program and uh, length of the program plus two years. So this is the first version of the uh, dashboard 2022-2023 that I'm sharing with you. Last year, we had added uh, different... Uh, functionalities, functions that would that wouldn't necessarily be necessary in one program in Lambda, but we have the possibility to uh, now with the different weighting to different to group different programs. For example, in the language department, there's a language uh, uh, two double uh, uh, programs. So they want to have a global view on uh, the success of their students. So we can do that now with this new option. So as I said, an interesting aspect of Power BI is the possibility of, uh, uh, for example, separating out the data. If you want to isolate the behavior of population A or population B, or in certain programs, we are going to observe uh, certain elements, the perception of people to say, oh, the uh, uh, men uh, are having more difficulty and to be able to look at the data and drill down, it's a allows us to check our perceptions and reconnect uh, with the facts. So before going to the next slide, I don't know if there are any questions concerning the dashboard. Well, there are three questions that were asked. They're very different. You can answer uh, them uh, when you uh, think it's relevant. First question, 
somebody could would like to see a practical example of building a, a dashboard with Power BI, an example of analysis. The second one from Karine Parent, she says, uh, uh, maybe it's already been answered, but who's responsible for extracting data and what frequency are the dashboards updated? Have you considered an external firm to create your pipeline or do you do it internally? I can answer that quickly. It's Francois, the wizard of the dashboard in our operations. Uh, I don't know if people know, but the database from which uh, we pull these indicators is the PESEP database that is updated twice a year. So on our end, in our operations at the CIGEP, we thought that it would be relevant to, to uh, uh, do that once a year, uh, to uh, update the dashboards once a year, because there's a lot of things happening also in parallel. So um, Francois, our analyst uh, at SCUS, who is responsible once a year, of uh, extracting the data and updating the dashboards. In the slide that we see now, what is the effect of the disciplines filter at the bottom of the screen? Well, it's not a filter. It brings us to another uh, graph, the success rate by program. Uh, so how we decided to manage in the program. So there's some programs, there's an issue that one class uh, uh, for a certain discipline, for a specific uh, course of training. So it becomes a bit delicate sometimes to present the, it that way. So it's a, the completion uh, by discipline for all classes of a course of study or discipline of study. So for example, in our program XYZ, we had uh, Discipline C, we can see here, course C, the success rate in one CEGEP compared to the average and the success rate in this discipline for a same cohort for uh, the full career, for the full data. So you can isolate uh, different uh, data uh, streams in our cohort here. The average success rate by discipline. There's some short questions. Are you ready to answer them? Dominique Trudel, who are the persons who have access to this dashboard with the possibility of uh, uh, separating and or drilling down on different elements of data? So for the last years, of the, depending on licensing, Francois and I would produce the reports, the RBI and the uh, CPA team that are responsible for uh, the uh, committees and the uh, uh, facilitating committees. And uh, now with the change in licensing uh, uh, with uh, Microsoft Education, including that, so uh, it will be all the community now who will be uh, able to have access to the reports that we will share. Last question, Martin Roy, who finds this very interesting. She says that I understand that HCP uh, is each uh, guidance counselor is trained to use the database? Yes, uh, th that's a good question. So uh, that will uh, bring me to the next part of my presentation. So it's not all the guidance counselors that have the uh, uh, ability to develop uh, uh, reports in uh, Power BI, but they were all accompanied to be able to see how they can use the dashboards uh, to enrich their analysis and their analysis tools as well. And we, as a team, we gave ourselves a, a process to systematize, to make things uh, systematic. So they call a different color, color coding for each guidance counselor on the program to have too much, to avoid having disparity uh, with two people who go into too much detail with data, who drill down too d deep. And so, and so we gave ourselves a framework uh, for uh, uh, that. So the reports when they're generated by Power BI, are they printable? I imagine so. Yes, they're exportable to PDF and printable. So what we did was when we had a certain number of licenses, we would uh, uh, send our uh, program coordinators the report and PDF version. And then there was uh, the incentive for saying we invite our uh, guidance counselors to the program if you want to test our hypotheses and benefit from uh, interactive discussions with the guidance counselors and the interactivity of the tool. So it's, it's printable and exportable as PDF. 
for the practical example on building a dashboard, we can go over that later, I imagine. Yes, well, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, so yes, if the person can maybe add certain, because what I see here is anonymous uh, person asking the question. So if you can uh, maybe be more specific with your question. Thank you. So I'm going to look at the data collection that we've done. It's uh, not a part of evaluation of uh, programs of study, but I thought it, it would be interesting to present because it's really different from our regular dashboards. So um, it also led to other actions that were very interesting. I thought that it was really, uh, really interesting. So Two years ago, in the fall 2022, there was a program uh, committee, uh, the technical uh, program of a, a technical program. Uh, uh, technical programs are very loaded, uh, uh, so we uh, get into the. We were in the semi-post pandemic at that time for the students who spent uh, many uh, semesters at home, um, using remote tools and all that. So. Uh, the uh, during that meeting of the program committee, there's a lot of teachers that expressed um, their observations that they felt that it was difficult for students, that the psychological state, the mental state was fragile. So with certain teachers that are in the com program committee, we developed a data collection tool, a survey on the psychological health and mental health of the students. And these uh, surveys, this data, uh, uh, before the presentation, we uh, invite the students that were in distress to consult uh, uh, the assistance program of their institution. But it uh, uh, gave us some really interesting data. The first page here, uh, the profile of our students that uh, answer the survey. So. We had some high response rates uh, so far since the fall 2022, and we see some improvements, and there's always a high uh, rate of response, 70-80%. Um, for a survey by Omnivox, we find that it's uh, quite good. So we had the profile of our students in terms of their sessions in the semesters, uh, the um, ventilation uh, in the program by semester. And if they are holding a job during their studies and if they work by obligation or not. So it was a question that was added that was not necessarily in the initial uh, questionnaire, but to get a better view with everything that we know about the precarity of the uh, difficulty of the students face in the last years. Our students, do they feel the pressure of having to work to meet their needs? Uh, so the number of hours worked per week as well. What's interesting with Power BI is the fact that we can go and isolate and semester by semester, what is the profile of our students in terms of uh, hours work? Uh, if they hold a job, etc. And I, that brings me to the next slide, which is the survey. We asked the students to evaluate themselves on a continuum with their uh, mental uh, state or when mental well-being, their uh, state of mental distress, and what uh, had an uh, effect on their mental health and what had a positive and what had a negative effect also on their mental health. And so we uh, know from different data collection that we've done and a lot of qualitative data with this questionnaire to be able to understand what are the factors of protection? What are the factors of resiliency? What are the factors that generate stress? Um, so we wanted to draw a general portrait of these students and so we could see that uh, during this first data collection this first pass uh, of collecting data we saw that uh, it was uh, pretty um, worrisome uh, draw a worrisome picture uh, we thought 
So the uh, studies were important, education were important on, in the positive uh, 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 mental state, but uh, for a big part of the people answering the survey, the uh, fact that they were studying uh, uh, was a source of stress. So we did an analysis to uh, look uh, further. Uh, the first semester students, depending on their uh, 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 program of study. There's certain internships, and we can uh, isolate. Then we could drill down on the data and look at uh, what the which students were answering which way, which ones had uh, more stress, more psychological fragility, uh, where they were on their educational path, and to see uh, if it's always uh, the same point uh, where they uh, meet with difficulty. So if that's not the case. There are some questions to ask on the workload and the organization of the program of study, et cetera. So that's really how uh, the survey was used. And it brought uh, uh, forward a lot of projects that were really incredible. Um, the CP, the, the guidance counselor of the company's program, uh, gave some training on uh, feedback, on reactivating and re constituting uh, knowledge from the past and pedagogical techniques, a lot of the teachers in different disciplines that uh, uh, not don't necessarily have a basis in pedagogy. So how do we work with that? So it's a basis uh, on the basis of the comments that we had received, the qualitative analysis that uh, qualitative analysis that is done around the needs of the students. There were some projects that were done in collaboration with uh, the psychosocial services and adaptive uh, services, uh, educationally adapted services. So we saw throughout different uh, years and different semesters, the increase of uh, requests for services by the students of a certain program and a reduction during the next uh, semesters of uh, uh, psychological issues that were expressed, so mental uh, uh, health issues. So the, the students uh, expressed that they had a better mental health and the, the uh, fact that they were uh, uh, in a program of study was less of a factor of stress. So there's some programs that were put in place with students that had failed their internship, failed the class that were uh, restarting. Uh, uh, so there were some meetings to accompany them. There was a project with a discipline also the uh, that worked with students after their first evaluation to see that there were certain students that were considered vulnerable uh, under a certain threshold after the first evaluation. So these students would be met. And uh, with the feedback that was received, we could see how we can help them continue their studies and how to prepare uh, uh, what were the issues that they had. And the students can uh, eventually be referred uh, to counselors and adaptive uh, services and uh, special educational services because there's, sometimes there's a diagnosis, but that wasn't necessarily uh, so uh, uh, valid before. So there's some measures that were put in place. Uh, so we continue to follow the efficacy and the impact uh, thanks to the deployment and usage uh, of uh, this uh, data. There was also some work that was done to offer a an evaluation table over four years to be able to destigmatize the fact that uh, 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 not maybe you don't do it over three years and have a little bit of more time and do it over four years instead and have some breathing room. So are there any questions regarding these uh, uh, aspects before I continue? Yes, there are some questions. So the practical example, the person was asking how to fill out data in a Power BI table and how to... Uh, um, produce graphs and tables. So it's a, a quite a learning curve. Yes, I'm going to give some resources at the end. I'm not going to do that and show you how to do it here, but I will give you the resources to do that. Julie, who asked the question, is it possible to converge answers with questionnaires, forms, questionnaires to Power BI? Yes. In forms, it generates an Excel table, and it's pretty easy after that uh, to uh, import that into Power BI uh, to uh, produce visual aids, tables, graphs, etc. Thank you. So we're good for now. Great. So let's continue. So the winning conditions Power BI, what were the, if you want to operate a transition in your Sejep uh, Power BI in your service uh, 
what would be the winning conditions? Well, first, to start from a need. Why? Because it uh, ensures that you have the uh, support of your managers, have uh, tests uh, and uh, trials and increased engagement of people who will help you work to find solutions and uh, who uh, will uh, try out different things as part of BI to get to the uh, uh, desired objective. So the, uh, there's the aspect of community. So another shout out to Mira Stad and Francois. So it really allows us to help each other, to share uh, new ideas, to whiteboard together and to really motivate uh, each other and ask uh, questions and uh, help each other uh, better use this tool to uh, meet our needs. So there's also the uh, idea of regularity. So a, a constant uh, flow uh, in our work, we collect the data in the fall every year. We do that once a year. Francois produces dashboards once a year. So sometimes it's like it's on autopilot. And if we don't put our hands into it to, too much, we get rusty. So to have a regular uh, a regularity, a constant uh, effort to be able to have a progression and a discipline. So on my end, I was really able to learn very quickly because we had meetings that were uh, dedicated with Repstat. So I had some uh, uh, schedule problems, but I didn't go to all the meetings. But the fact that the next time I have to come in and the two modules and it was like uh, very motivating and to uh, uh, explore the analytical functions. I uh, blocked out some time in my calendar and uh, to uh, retest things. And there's always uh, some things that came and bothered my work and I had to block out some time so to not be distracted. So it was one of the winning conditions that I would uh, recommend. And uh, to have some time uh, working as a team, it's time for teamwork and team building. So to focus on using the tool, I have some great ideas maybe, but these ideas uh, never uh, had the impact or the range you know, that they could have uh, without all the feedback and questions and support working as a team. So the comments received once they've done animations and used them for analysis that allows us to improve the tools and widen the perspectives, the scope of our work as a team. And it uh, brings us to uh, 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 further in uh, what we want to do. So our transition into Power BI really brought us to systematically uh, uh, define our process. So the uh, it's a six year process to evaluate the programs of study, collect uh, perceptual data. We have the list here of t of tools, and we also have the analysis of coherence of uh, pedagogical tools. It's an analysis uh, of the cursus and uh, 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 programs of study, and uh, to make sure that everything uh, is in line and the evaluation uh, tools uh, for the final evaluation. So there's the dashboards that are produced six times for six years. So for each of the tools, you have the number of times they're produced but in a six year cycle. So the, the dashboards are annual. Uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, tools are uh, annual and some of them are once per six years. So six times for six years. So uh, 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 all of them are annual in, in other words. So they, uh, to be able to um, standardize uh, 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 and offer a certain uh, level of analysis and uh, harmonization of practice between the different uh, tools, some of them once per six years, some, some of them once every year. And so you can see the complementary tools that we've developed. So there's some uh, uh, guidance, uh, quality of uh, analysis and the lexicon of the, uh, 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 of the uh, labeling. Once you have uh, some labeling and we have uh, some uh, labeling to be able to direct us into what themes and what uh, issues it intersects. So all the quality of work allows us to develop and increase uh, uh, the searchability and the uh, functionality with the lexicon of the uh, uh, labeling and also the coherence of the uh, uh, table. So we have a, a, a table of uh, to aggregate uh, the uh, analysis and to respect our uh, uh, ethical uh, rules. Also a process for analysis of coherence to make sure that uh, 
there's an institutional memory that uh, how do we deploy that because it's an operation that is uh, pretty delicate we get into the personal information of the class and the uh, uh, the, uh very detailed information about the curses and the uh, we want to make sure everybody is comfortable with that and that the principles uh, are, are respected for uh, the program committee for ethical considerations. We look at all these uh, evaluations to draw a uh, portrait so that there's not one teacher that would be singled out. For the analysis tables we uh, developed for the dashboards, we have a complementary tool. We have a document documentation uh, uh, and uh, a lot of things that happen at the local level, but also at the program level uh, so that we can observe in certain programs. And um, so uh, certain uh, help uh, processes at the local level to be able to document them and assistance uh, processes to be able to better interpret our data, to better contextualize them. And uh, um, in the last years, there was a certain turnover in the CP team, I think it was something pretty frequent everywhere uh, to be able to have guidance counselors have a turn uh, over to have the uh, tools to understand the context. To, uh, even if somebody doesn't have a historical view is somebody who's new, so they can use uh, this to inform them on, uh, and to inform their context. So everything done by SRAM also, the interpreting of the data to process the data and uh, uh, COVID uh, statistics and the impact on the success rate of the students, et cetera. We can also document uh, that and to be able to uh, better interpret and uh, process the data. We have an accompaniment tool for the dashboard to explain the indicators and give us indications on the analysis and uh, uh, for uh, the workshops related to the dashboards, the uh, uh, animation for the dashboard. So uh, to look back on a transition of Power BI, um, what has that allowed us to do uh, for me? It was really a pretext to, to share our experience and our lessons learned and best practices that uh, the importance of leaving a space, leaving room when we use a, a tool to process data, Power BI, Excel, or any other tool, we have a tendency to really focus on the numbers. But those numbers, this data um, really, sorry, um, these numbers are nothing if we cannot give them context, if we cannot give them meaning, if there's not qualitative meaning to them, and if we cannot cross-reference and cross-reference the sources of data to so have a better portrait of the situation. I'll give you an example that I've experienced in Mali. When we did the follow-up of the implementation of the new programs, there were some locals that uh, had some labs that uh, were put in place in the project with new equipment, uh, with a new infrastructure, and uh, the implementation and deploying uh, questionnaires with the students, we saw that all the questions uh, concerning the labs, we had the non-applicable and uh, incomplete answers that we didn't really understand. But in uh, drilling down and looking at the qualitative data, Oh, and questioning the people concerned by the usage of these labs, we saw that the profs that sent their students to the lab didn't have necessarily all the training on the some issues to just having access to the key to open the door to the lab. Sometimes the labs were ready, but the material was not uh, set up. So the conclusion that we could have drawn on the basis of these numbers is to say, okay, the teachers, uh, the students think that the uh, lab time is not satisfactory. So without contextualizing that, we could not have had all the macro view on the situation and the necessary actions to uh, make sure to rectify the situation. So in the context of this project, following these conclusions, there were some recommendations that were drawn. There were some uh, training days that were done with the teachers to help uh, better use the labs. It's a mechanism put in place for reserving uh, the labs access to the key. There was a lab tech that was hired to be available to assist the teachers. So all of this uh, actions that uh, came from a good understanding of the context of the data. 
the transition to Power BI was also for us an opportunity for deep thinking on our structure and processes. So really, we are in a perspective of uh, continuous improvement. We are very aware that there's always room for improvement, and we are very much uh, uh, listening to the comments of the guidance counselors and the program team and the tools. There's always room for uh, gleaming feedback, for getting feedback to improve our uh, tools, our process, the way we do things. The transition to Power BI was also an opportunity to uh, better uh, value and appreciate our uh, data and uh, some program teams that were very comfortable in using the data, uh, but for others, it was not as easy some guidance counselors the company the programs it was not as uh, uh, natural so in giving these tools to our teams we are uh, uh, able to better use our data and uh, 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 have more valuable data in that way. So to be able to uh, uh, make better institutional choices, the data uh, 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 helps us in decision making and our, our thinking process. So when we look at certain decisions, we say, why did we take this path? Well, then we can say, okay, it was because the data said this and this. And we can always then go back and look at our process and understand. Uh, where our perceptions come from and uh, uh, what data inform them. It's also developed uh, a culture around the data, a culture around using the data and the institutional development of data usage, an objective that is uh, related to the supporting uh, uh, our decisions with data and orient our actions uh, with using data. So in Cegep uh, Levy, what we want to do going forward with Power BI, what would be the next steps? Well, uh, of course, uh, I'm a guidance counselor for uh, education success. All the uh, uh, efficiency of uh, health measures helps me a lot. Uh, it's very interesting and helped me a lot. And I worked with a lot of uh, uh, teachers who gave me uh, access to resources, explored different hypotheses, and some also that uh, we were working with uh, different uh, teachers and different departments and disciplines that wanted to... Uh, uh, test uh, some hypotheses, uh, pedagogical uh, theories with the uh, different groups. And uh, we uh, uh, developed some tools to collect data from the students. And it happened sometimes that uh, we uh, uh, had uh, data from teachers and students and, and they wanted to uh, uh, find out if their uh, theory was true or not or founded or not. So, so uh, exploring the uh, analytical functions. Um, and it's been two years that I want to uh, try and explore the analytical functions of Power BI. But unfortunately, I haven't had uh, uh, as much time as I would have liked. So it's really something that I think would be interesting to really facilitate uh, people's work. And we are always uh, in a spirit of continuous improvement to continue to optimize our processes. So what's coming also in the ecosystem? Um, we are seeing with AI an acceleration of the uh, development and different tools that are developed in different ways, different uh, uh, connections between these different uh, uh, tools and the uh, with the, the cloud and uh, uh, build 25 on private information, all this uh, data that we have to manage. And so that's not always easy. Uh, we always have to consider uh, these things. So that's what we're looking at uh, in the coming years. So in closing, I would like to remind you to moderate uh, your enthusiasm because when you start with Power BI, because sometimes you want to present all the data because it's really cool and there's so many things we can look at, but too much information is like not enough. So there's a lot of work to do to have a balance. Um, so the CP, the guidance counselor team is doing this to uh, look at the more essential pillars, what are the uh, most important pieces of data and how we can put them in the right context. And uh, they have done a great work to uh, really make it effective and efficient and uh, look at the important pieces of data and what are the pillars of our decision making uh, uh, to 
improve the quality of educational programs and the success of students. So now I want to say that if you want to begin with the Power BI, I propose a training on Microsoft Learn that I had really enjoyed, which was cleaning, uh, processing, and loading data into Power BI. It gives you a good uh, introduction, but there's a lot of modules in Microsoft Learn uh, around uh, developing dashboards, uh, developing uh, different visual aids and tables. Uh, you will be able to have a lot of fun uh, with that. There's also my uh, sad colleague, Alexandre Bio, who had uh, um, told uh, helped us to discover LinkedIn Learning. There's a platform there that uh, with VAQ we can uh, have some training uh, 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 there as well. So it could be a good uh, starting point. It's all free. So uh, just take the time. And I would invite you, if you want to begin with Power BI, to really center yourself first on what your needs are and what are uh, the needs you wish to pursue to be able to have the winning conditions uh, uh, to pursue your goals. So uh, questions, uh, comments, and now is the time. Sorry, a question first, do are your Microsoft servers in Canada? Um, I think that it's in the law, the new law, but I would have to ask uh, uh, the IT department. For, I don't know. Perfect. Okay. So we will get that information. If people know the answer, they can uh, maybe uh, uh, let us know. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Nicole, I'm going to answer all the information for the college network all these CEGEPs colleges in Canada have to have their servers in Canada so the answer is yes it's a legal obligation thank you Jad that was uh, our uh, IT person Jad other question next question what is your opinion concerning small colleges where the qualitative data is less important than qualitative it's always a challenge and we have certain programs where very small cohorts uh, where we not even talk about cohorts under 30. We're talking about cohorts under 10. So it's always um, a bit delicate to uh, uh, use this data, to analyze this data correctly. But to say that don't base yourselves on percentages because we know that one student can change the whole thing. Uh, when it's a small cohort, but to cross-reference the data with observations and uh, and other data sources and other data sets. So maybe a bit more qualitative to counterbalance the uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, data. Uh, so um, what element or criteria have you chosen to have a six-year cycle? What made you do that? I wasn't there when that decision was made. Uh, I couldn't say why we are chosen a six-year cycle. I imagine that what we won with the PGAP and the continuous uh, evaluation of studies of program to be able to uh, have cyclical uh, processes to uh, re-evaluate uh, and re uh, design things to not do that continuously, to have a cycle when the program to avoid evaluation program was developed, uh, uh, deployed. It was uh, part of our thinking into what programs uh, 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 are at what point of the six-year cycle when we felt certain updates, uh, changes locally that were urgent. We put them in the last years of the cycle to be able to have some time to collect data, to have the opportunity to collect data, but also to project into the future towards uh, other uh, tables and other uh, uh, data analysis that is coming. So it was strategically placed to be able to coincide uh, that with the opening, potential opening of uh, a new program and a new evaluation table. So for the reason of the six years, honestly, I don't know. I can't go further than that. Your Najwa, who is asking, how is the data collected? How are the comments collected? It's a bit more technical, I imagine. Yes. But we have uh, tools on uh, Omnivox and on forms. And so there are always, we have a support agent who will go and get the questions and who uh, 
related to quality of data and comments, we developed a tool in Excel to be able to consolidate all these comments and feedback to be able to then filter and uh, drill down on what uh, people say on what aspects and uh, or what subjects and uh, are, are the have the comments changed in time? What are the teachers say versus the students? And uh, so we can also then filter through by semester. It's a tool that will bring together all the comments in the six year cycle and from all the respondents. And then it's easier in Excel to uh, filter through and the, uh, different labels and what are the themes that come out more are these themes uh, positively or negatively viewed or etc i would like to close in giving a colleague from your colleague catherine paquet boivin i am a big fan of audrey audrey great uh, work colleague you inspire me and bravo for your cgep for developing development and uh, a consultation on data. So uh, I'll just go back on a slide because your slides on Power BI, we can't see them in the slide deck that you sent me. So can you go back to the uh, slide, the first dashboard? I'm gonna do a screen capture of the first dashboard so I can then put it into the first one this one if you could click on total yes this one so i'm just gonna take a screenshot so thank you everybody for your presence your participation today it was uh, very interesting and uh, uh um um i think that if i read the comments i'm not the only one to have appreciated audrey's presentation so uh, thank you